Hello everyone. Today we take a look at Coors Park by Shogo. Uh, this is uh, the first of a series of two parks, Coors uh, West, which is this one, and Coors East, which was the follow-up. Uh, the theme here is uh, Coors Brewing Company um, had a park, uh, essentially the same kind of way as Busch Gardens uh, does. Um, and there was a West Park and an East Park. Um, there's a nice little timeline that goes along with this park showing the additions over time. Um, but uh, the park's got a lot of detail and some great coasters. So uh, let's dive on in uh, up here at the entrance. Uh, Shogo has used um, all the real estate. So the entrance kind of gets crammed right up here to the, the edge. It's a little bit of a shame. There's not some room to breathe here uh, on the ticket booths. Uh, but we have a parking lot out here. Uh, some nice detailing here with the uh, half sign. Uh, with Coors Park and a little bit of a logo uh, on there. And then we have a pretty nice uh, entrance here, sort of understated. Uh, this park is located in uh, Golden, Colorado, where Coors Brewing Company uh, is, uh, headquarters is located. Uh, so it's kind of a nice, um, uh, nice little uh, location-based uh, park here. So we have a lot of little mountainous areas, uh, some of this red sand used to advantage uh, throughout. So um it's a very pleasant park overall um so coming in through this entrance uh here uh, which is kind of a nice woodsy brick uh, sort of americana type entrance got your uh little information booth that i like isn't hidden i like the stock information booth is used but with some added scenery so it's kind of a, a little bit of a hybrid of the standard versus something else added to it uh, we have some nice little awnings here uh Covering uh, across the entrance here, this is uh, Patriot Square, according to the signage. Um, all of the typical entry buildings, such as the restroom and the uh, gift shops, uh, which I assume uh, this is a uh, Coors gift shop. Yep. So that's uh, used there. And then our first uh, main building here, as you come on in, the, uh, the wing of the space, as it would be referred to from Disney um, lingo, is the train station. So this is the Silver Bullet Railway, which runs around the park with uh, two stations, I think. Um, and then on uh, this side, we have another little gift shop here. So let's go in this direction, because according to the storyline, uh, this coaster, Midnight, was the first one uh, that got built into the park. Uh, Farm Town is the area that we're about to transition into. Uh, as we go by, we have the uh, trampolines here, which... A little bit hefty as far as the structure goes, but on the whole, not too bad. Um, and then I, I like over here, we have the uh, little mini games with uh, the golf holes being used. I think that's a nice, clever detail there. Um, and then some little back of house areas here as well. So uh, the first thing we get to before the coaster happens is the uh, drop tower. There's Daredevil. Um, one side is the turbo drop, and the other side is the space shot. Uh, so nice little bit of variety there and um, some good detailing as far as the uh, uh, station area goes as well. But uh, the ride in question here that we want to look at is Midnight. Uh, so coming through the entrance plaza here, we have a nice queue that kind of wraps around, kind of reminiscent of a Cedar Fair type queue line that's uh, sort of meandering, uh, a little bit narrow here, um, and the, the big fences on either side. This is an Aerodynamics 7 Inversion Coaster, um, I think. Uh, the timeline on this was 1978, which um, might be a little early, but not too, too bad. Uh, there's uh, This is pretty much following the stock inversion pattern, I suppose. There's two loops, uh, a pause, another loop, uh, then a uh, boomerang element, uh, which has is more of a bat wing, according to uh, B and M, uh, and then we have the double cork here at the end, uh, with the final helix uh, on the back side. But uh, great little layout here, flat drop into the big uh, diving uh, straight hill. Um, really great supports overall, uh, including these loop supports, which look excellent. Uh, the way that the uh, V shape goes here and straddles the uh, track. Have the second curve here. Uh, and this little bit of a, a, a curve down here into the, the bat wing element here. Um, through the double cork 
over and into the final helix and the brakes. So again, nice look overall. Um, nice transfer track, all the fine detailing in there too. Um, maintenance area coming across. I like that the maintenance area back road shares the track with, or shares the space with the train track. And I think that's a nice touch overall. Um, this one does not have a mid-course brake run, which is kind of typical of the larger ones, but there's no reason that it couldn't. Um, this is running two trains, which is appropriate for that also. Uh, we did say this was farm town, so here is our uh, appropriately themed farm building. Uh, Coca-Cola freestyle uh, and a barbecue restaurant. <clears throat> then we have some other little, uh, kind of cute little buildings. Uh, this whole area kind of terminates with the rapids ride over here. This is Colorado River Rapids, a pretty short rapids ride on the whole. It's really just kind of a big U shape that wraps around itself, um, but some nice little elements uh, have our kind of obligatory 1K rocks, but some nice little detailing here with the water source. Um, I like this drop uh, here that you can, can only see when you turn the corner here underneath of the Q bridge. Uh, so Q integrated nicely here as well. Um, just on the whole, it looks, looks good. Um, we have our uh, little raft storage area here with some uh, presumably filter tanks. Um, probably missing a, a little davit arm or something that could pick this raft up and take it out there. But uh, on the whole, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice look. <clears throat> so we'll continue along. Um, Farmtown is kind of a linear uh, space here, but uh, it looks good overall. You can kind of tell that the coaster itself kind of blocks what you can do there. Um, and I like both of these course screws were used. We have the uh, train coming through the one and the queue coming through the other. Um, so nice pathway detailing here with the different colors of path and then also using some of the uh, flat roof texture to uh, fill that in. So I like that look overall. All right, so let's continue to the uh, next area over here. Uh, we have a Tornado and SNS Scream and Swing. Um, only one side running. Would have been cool to see both sides, but um, the one side is peepable, which is a nice touch. Um, really great structure here overall. Uh, I think this looks nice. We have the uh, air pressure tanks on either side, and the, the structure feels pretty darn realistic. A little nice fountain in the corner here as well. Um, as we wrap up and around, uh, we have these... Uh, Typical uh, buildings throughout, um, sort of western-ish buildings. Um, wrapping around here, we have a pretty sizable cafe um, across this little bridge and, and pathway. Um, nice look. I like how the uh, kind of car almost uh, blue carpet, I guess instead of red carpet, rolls on out um, to bring folks in. And I like the porch here that wraps around the entire thing with a little bit of overhang on that roof. Some good detailing here, too, with the little carts uh, and the, the various stands. Um, and then a um, pretty heavily themed little gift shop here with this nice uh, tower. Um, across the way are some lockers, um, which would serve this coaster, I suppose. So this is a revolver. This is an Intamin LSM uh, launch coaster, kind of a la Maverick at Cedar Point. <clears throat> so it's got the uh, fast lift hill and also the launch. So here we go, watching this guy come around. Um, pretty good little layout here. Uh, definitely some appropriate Intamin type details. Um, we have our one point of interaction here. I think that's probably my only limit on this ride is that the real Maverick has um, a pretty good section where they, they are both sort of racing, dueling each other um, across, assuming they get dispatched at the proper time. But uh, this one only has the one spot, which you know isn't too bad uh, overall. I do like the various use of the track types, so the quad rail track here on the, the drop itself. Um, this is a nice little wraparound helix um, with the water fountains uh, coming down, uh, kind of synced up nicely. And then we also have our tunnel down here with the launch and the uh, pieces of smoke or little bits of smoke here, so some effects inside that tunnel. And then also the nice launch catwalk detailing all the way up. Supports are good all around. Uh, there's a lot of them, which is good because Intamins typically have more supports than a VM, for example. So that's a nice little detail over there. Um, good transfer track also could be a little, a little bit longer potentially, but uh, not too bad overall. 
Uh, so we are continuing along. We've got uh, some more little uh, details here. These are flume lockers on uh, this side, which I think is kind of a um, nice little uh, detail there. And then we also have the info kiosk. So let's go look at that flume, which has a cool entrance here, a uh, log jammer entrance right across the, uh, the start of this. Um, this whole area kind of takes place in almost a little dry lake bed because you can see the water coming from this side uh, down into this area and then some of those details that kind of look like hey, maybe this used to be a larger lake that's, that's a little bit less so now. Uh -huh. That's a pretty big log flume, but uh, it feels about right. It kind of feels similar to um, a lot of the, the flumes of the era. Um, we definitely have the built-up track uh, here. So I got some monorail track in here and then some uh, water slide track and then the actual flume track on top. So it's pretty hefty, a little bit of a chunky track, but um, it, it feels right. Um, the final drop here using the, the water slide track, which I think is probably the best bet for uh, large uh, flume drops. I think that that's looking the best at this point. Um, some pretty cool um, drop positioning here. Unfortunately, you can't see it from the path, but you can absolutely see it from the train. Uh, kind of a neat little truss bridge here um, as well as going over top of. I like the detailing up here as well because we've got our, our back area over here. Um, but we also have this, the uh, log jammer retention tank. Now, uh, this is not near big enough to hold all of this kind of thing. Typically, a log flume or a rapids ride or anything like that would have a lake underneath of it or next to it or somewhere nearby that it could pull from. But uh, this is a pretty good solution to it, and at least it kind of shows the thought process through that that design. Um, I'd probably say maybe you're pulling from this lake instead over here. Um, but, uh, there's also this great little detail here with the, the fence, but we still have the access up to this area. Maybe a, a little davit arm here to be able to pick out that boat would be a nice little touch, but, uh, on the whole, I think that's really well done. Um, and then kind of stopping for a minute to point out the, the foliage, I think was pretty well done throughout pretty thick, uh, selection of plants. And then as we transition out of the heavier forested area, we have some, a little a couple of 1K ruins just showing the rock of the uh, the natural area here in Colorado. And then this sort of bordering uh, flowers around, so the purple flowers, the yellow flowers. Um, <clears throat> maybe not something you'd see in real life, perhaps, but I think it looks nice in this RCT setting um, in that area. So now we'll jump out of that area and we're going to transition over into uh, this side. So we've got a couple of coasters in here, uh, three actually, and then some other good rides too. Uh, so let's start with the wooden coasters. So this is Mephisto. Um, in the back here, we have a uh, spare or old train, I suppose, that uh, have since been replaced with these guys. I don't um, know which train that was meant to be initially, but uh, we've got our... Uh, here, assumingly brand new PTC uh, six car trains. Um, I don't recall offhand who this manufacturer was meant to be. It kind of looks like a gravity group. Um, so uh, those could be uh, Timberliner trains actually. Um, it's kind of got a little bit of Ghost Rider in it, I feel like, and then also just some of the, the typical gravity group type elements, a lot of the low to the ground hills, fast corners, and this kind of cool bridge like you might see on a ravine flyer too up at Waldemere. Um, and this cool uh, sort of weaving back and forth finale uh, here as well. Sliding uh, table transfer track is uh, not quite what you'd usually see on a gravity group, but... Uh, no sense to say that they wouldn't do it. Um, but I also like this queue, though. I think this is really well done, passing up and underneath, and then we have the bridge across into the, the station, which has some pretty uh, unique architecture as well. It's pretty small, but it, it looks nice and it fits well. And then also we have this nice detail here of an old boat rental uh, dock before this ride would have come in. Underneath of this coaster, we have the uh, Black Forest Joyride. Um, going through the wooden coaster structure itself. We have some nice landscaping throughout and then some structures here. Um, and then this uh, little barn element that we're gonna uh, motor on through. Uh, I like this 
uh, use of the uh, the suspended single rail coaster track. I think that looks nicer than the standard uh, coaster track or uh, car ride track that sits underneath of it. But um, you know, on the whole, it's a good look overall. Continuing our uh, German Black Forest theme, we have the Hansel and Gretel uh, circus or uh, show uh, theater element here. A uh, nice little tower uh, entry here with the kind of dark brick look. I like that overall. Um, we have some uh, two by two flat rides here. Unfortunately, neither of them are peepable, um, but uh, we've got the helicopter ride here and then this uh, little monorail ride, which is just motoring along. Uh, probably making you pretty dizzy at that speed, but uh, going well. And we have our scrambler up underneath, and over here is um, Wonderfalk, the drop tower. And then the queue line is back here. I kind of like this uh, uh, water tower-esque uh, detailing as well. Uh, and then on the other side here is uh, a Whataburger, which is a good choice. Good burger chain. So nice uh, W sign here. And then we also have the striped uh, uh, rooftop. I think that's a really nice look. And it's also themed in here really well with uh, still having the wood roofs and the um, and then some of the uh, more timber frame detailing throughout. Uh, jumping over to this side, we have our uh, very uh, alpine type uh, ride here. We have Avalanche. Uh, this is an Intamin Swiss Bob ride, uh, and the layout's pretty darn good. Uh, it fits uh, approximately similar to the real thing. Uh, a lot of lock breaks on these because they don't have a whole lot of seating capacity. So there's six people per car on this, um, and at the moment there are only two of these left. One at Six Flags Over Texas and one at The Great Escape in uh, New York. Uh, but there are fun rides, uh, so, and you don't see them terribly often in RCT, so I think this is a nice touch overall. Um, really great selection of uh, architecture here. Um, I like these sort of gingerbread uh, looking houses. Super open station here with a lot of nice detailing. The arches are great. Um, just good look overall. And then also the, the detailing here using the, uh, the brake run for uh, the station so we don't have the, the trough uh, throughout. Also another uh, nod to the pathway detailing, which I like a lot. Um, we've got the brick turned in the opposite direction uh, for this little section, and then you also have the more tan pathway throughout. So it looks like more games along here in this uh, space, and then we also have our uh, final coaster in the area. Three coasters is a lot, but uh, always nice to see. Uh, this is a Schwarzkopf coaster um, with the track style that was used twice else in uh, Six Flags Over Georgia at Mindbender and at Six Flags Over Texas with Shockwave. So that would have been around 1978 time frame. So those rides have uh, two loops. This ride has one loop, but the layout is kind of familiar with the same thing. We've got this sort of swooping drop, which Schwarzkopf was wont to do. Uh, with these little drop and then rise into the uh, drop underneath the lift hill, which is kind of a nice touch overall. Using the appropriate trains and train length. Here we're going to jump up through the loop, which is kind of neat that we go through it first before we go around it. I think that's a nice touch overall. Nice little tunnel here. Another swoopy drop up into this uh, mid-course breaks. Um, down into another uh, bit of this dry lake bed space. And we're going to wrap around this kind of natural rock formation here and then head out into the brake run. Uh, so a good look overall. I think this is a cool ride, a uh, good layout, and uh, certainly a pretty striking blue uh, compared to some of the other things in the area with all the, the wood and the, the brick. Uh, you kind of have this as a pretty muted color area, but this guy jumps out in your face uh, pretty well, which, which I like. So let us retrace our steps just a little bit, and uh, we will cross underneath of the railroad bridge here uh, and find our second train station. So this is uh, station two of the two stations. There are two, like I thought, initially. Um, a stately looking uh, architecture here. Uh, 
as we run over to our bridge here. Not quite sure what that support's doing here in the middle, but um, nice little structure overall uh, for that. And also a, a pretty solid Coca-Cola billboard here on the wall with some of these uh, water detailing as well. Uh, we have a second entrance on the back side here, which I think is kind of a neat touch because there are still a lot of parks that have two or more entrances. Uh, here are parking trams, so assuming that there is more parking than just what you see here. Here's a paved lot, and then here is the, uh, uh, the dirt lot on the side. Um, this is a little bit of a smaller entrance than up front, but it still has some nice details. This little building here, our ticket booths underneath these canopies. Um, then a pretty simple uh, uh, ticket purchase area and our turnstiles back here uh, with a nice little sign. I like this little uh, fountain in the fence. I think that's a cool detail, kind of a, a tie-in detail almost, but uh, nicely put together there. In our plaza on the back side, we have this theater space, uh, which has kind of this wavy entrance here and a pretty nice marquee on the front. I like the look of this overall. It's a good shape and the, the light towers are cool. It feels very, you know, architecturally special uh, compared to some of the other areas. And a lot of times theaters are pretty easy to get into the habit of either making a block or a triangle, a square or a rectangle. Uh, but this one's nice because it has a little bit of detailing on the backside there to make it more interesting. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more done with the stage itself, either something on the stage or um, just some kind of information about what was coming next, uh, just to give it a little bit of life that, um, that it, it lacks otherwise. So looking on the other side here, we have this nice little gazebo and then a couple of um, entry uh, points here with the picnic pavilion also on the side. Um, nice little light post detail there. All right, so we will continue along past the uh, <clears throat> Jacob's Ladder uh, game, which is always a staple in uh, some of these theme parks, uh, into uh, this next area here, which I think has some really great path detailing. I like the, uh, the light-colored pathway, but this in the center using the, the flat roof texture, as well as this other sort of larger cobblestone path, um, looks really nice overall. I think that's a great look. Um, we have an Enterprise here at the end, um, Tomahawk, uh, with the uh, hidden base, which has done well. Uh, and then on the opposite side here, we have Puma. This is the second wooden coaster in the park. Um, nice little uh, wood station here, pretty simple, but nicely detailed uh, across the whole thing. Uh, also using some PTC trains. Uh, more of a traditional wooden coaster, kind of looks like it could be a... Uh, Summers and Din ride, or um, you know any of those types. Uh, flat corners on here, but we have a couple of uh, diving corners to uh, uh, to frame those. So here's this guy on this side, and then we have one here at the end. But uh, nice bit of tall structure here, and some extra structural parts and pieces added on that uh, give this a little bit of a good look to it. Uh, dive under here, up and around this last turn, around all this. Uh, Foliage, you can you can tell this ride's been here longer than the others because a lot of these trees have grown up in the middle of it. So I think that's a good a good look overall. So on uh, the inside here we have a Taco Bell, uh, which is kind of a nice themed detail uh, there with the Spanish looking uh, <clears throat> architecture and then the the sign here with the logo recreated pretty well. And we continue across to this ride here. This is Sacrifice. Uh, this is a assuming Intamin Spillwater Splash Boat ride with some nice uh, detailing there. We have some uh, teepees and a uh, nice little bridge across the uh, railroad coming in. And uh, then a pretty simple uh, tent-like structure for the station. But uh, I actually like that a lot with these uh, angled columns uh, coming out of the barrels. That's a good little detail that, um, that you might not uh, have seen. Uh, double down drop here off of the mountainside. This is sort of reminiscent of the uh, Spillwater ride that was at uh, Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, in San Antonio, where it used the existing mountainside as a, uh, as a structure, and the ride dropped off the side of it. 
Over here we have, I think, the last coaster that we're going to get to. This is a standard Vacoma SLC, which, um, you know, unfortunate for the riders since those are not always the most comfortable, but uh, I think the layout is done incredibly well uh, using the, the purple and the red here, which is a nice striking combination. <clears throat> So lots of folks have recreated these in lots of different ways. I think uh, this one is maybe a little bit stretched. <clears throat> Usually that uh, uh, Sidewinder element here is a little closer to the brake run here. I honestly think we probably could have chopped off two or three pieces of this brake run and squeezed this whole thing in just a little bit. Uh, but on the whole, well done and, and well put together. Um, I think it's it's a good look overall. And... Um, the uh, the ride's looking looking nice. Um, also, some good detailing here with the uh, transfer track. Uh, Vacoba uses a flip track uh, for the SLCs, or did, I suppose, since I don't build this anymore. Um, one note, though, is that this should have been going the other direction, since when it flips, that will put it right side aligned with this guy uh, here. <clears throat> but great supports, great detailing overall. Uh, I think this uh, architecture in here is is pretty strong. Uh, <clears throat> I'm especially liking the locker building here with the canopy across uh, to this other building, kind of anchoring the other side of that that space. Um, and then all these sort of low low buildings kind of nestled into the landscape uh, on the sides here. Here is a uh, nice working flat ride. This is a Himalaya ride called uh, Rain Dance. Uh, I like the covering here with the open space, so you can kind of still see it, but the ride itself is covered. Uh, a little bigger than a lot of these typically are as far as the steepness goes, um, but it's on the diagonal, so I think that's kind of a nice look to it overall. Um, it uh, looks good, uh, and the fact that it's peepable, that, that always helps. Uh, opposite that, we have our uh, Swinging Ship Conquest, um, so that's a staple of the theme parks, and Get it oriented nicely here so that the ride will swing towards you as you're walking out on the path, which I kind of like. And then our last ride here as we get back to Patriot Square is the Chorus Carousel uh, under a nice canopy here, nice little blue roofs, uh, kind of setting that apart from everything else here, which is black and brown. Um, and then some really great plaza detailing in here, more of the, the festoons uh, across the, the buildings. And then we have all these little cut details throughout, sort of like a festival market uh, throughout the entire location. Um, <clears throat> and then up underneath of here, we do have the Dodgems, which I missed when I was going through the rides. Um, and then some other uh, branded restaurants like the Cold Stone Creamery that's uh, right here. Uh, and then on this side, we have the uh, uh, Founders Snacks. And I really like this sign that's uh, stuck off the side of it. Uh, <clears throat> on the whole, there's lots of really good details here. Um, I mentioned earlier the back of house area over here, which comes off of this back road, which leads to our second entrance. Um, really liking these kind of signs throughout. Um, this landscape is beautiful. Um, transitioning from the grass and dirt to the sand to the uh, dirt, uh, back to the reddish sand and then the reddish rock on top. I think that that whole structure looks very nice. Uh, we have our Sawtooth Warehouse building here, which is sort of the maintenance area. Maybe could have been a little bit more messy back here, just with some, some parts and pieces. Unfortunately, maintenance areas are never so clean, but uh, this looks good uh, throughout. And then we have another building here as well. Um, so great look overall on, on all of that. And then there are lots of nice little details uh, around the, uh, the park itself. We've got the nice farmland here uh, as we work across. Um, a little bit of a drainage ditch here. Uh, and then this uh, nice little gulch has a pretty good truss structure uh, bridge crossing over that and then pulling off to the side. <clears throat> so I believe that's pretty much everything for this park. Uh, great detailed park and uh, a good precursor to Coors East, which is the, the second park, and in my opinion also the, the better park of the two, though this one's uh, certainly nothing to sneeze at. This is a great, uh, great design overall and has some excellent coaster layouts. I think probably my favorite on this park would be the uh, Arrow uh, Looping Coaster, uh, though I do really like the uh, Schwarzkopf Coaster as well, and uh, I got a lot of seeing those Intamin Swiss Bob uh, rides just because those are so 
uh, unique as far as uh, seeing them in RCT goes and in real life now. There's not a whole lot of those anymore. Um, but well put together, lots of great details, um, nice architecture throughout. Um, I think uh, this is a, a park that was well deserving of its initial award. So uh, well done to Shogo, and uh, we will come back and review Coors East at some point. It won't be immediate, but uh, we will come back and check that out since it is a great park uh, and we did have a request to do it. Um, if you would like to see your park uh, reviewed or there's another park you'd like to see, send a note to cedarpoint6 at newelement.com, anydesigns.com, uh, the New Element forums, uh, or uh, leave a comment in the YouTube channel uh, and definitely subscribe if you'd like to see some more of uh, these videos. Uh, so until next time, thank you very much for watching.